right, ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud to introduce this young lady on the Crazy Juicy Love podcast. Oh, Mickey used to fire. You can keep it for my mind. Hey, Mickey. <laughs> Mickey Charney, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? Hey, boo. Hey, boo. Uh, the juicy, what do we call it? The Juicy Crazy. Love Podcast? Crazy Juicy Love Podcast. Crazy Juicy Love. <laughs> okay, because like Crazy Stupid Love. Yeah. Crazy Sexy Love. Yes. All, 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 all kinds of love. Yeah. All of love. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, you know, Mickey's a colleague and a friend of mine, and she's like, you know, you're always like this big powerhouse singer, like, take the stage <laughs> and yeah, blow them they away. They definitely love me a good, a good ballad. A good <laughs> I know, number. you do. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I'm so happy that you responded, because I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> bring me yeah. those vocals, you know. Oh um, so, Mickey, tell, let us know a little bit about you, what you do, and you know, how do you make an impact in the world? Well, so I do many things. Uh, I have a background in musical theater, which is my first love, I would say. I love to sing, I love to dance, I love to act. Um, and I also have a really strong calling and passion for making a difference with people and being of service. So uh, currently what I'm doing for a living is I coach and I'm a coach in the dental industry. So what that means <laughs> is that private practice dentists hire my company to take them on for at least one year at a time. So we do 12 month contracts and we have a methodology that we implement with them. But what makes us so unique from other dental consulting companies out there is that we're also focusing on the human beings, like transforming mm -hmm. each and every human being that works in that practice so that they are empowered to go be successful and be of service everywhere in their life, not just in the practice with patients. Yeah, because I, um, I remember hearing some things where you were like, having them like be in their own life. <laughs> like Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Like I can't tell you how many dentists I've worked with now who are like, I really don't enjoy dentistry that much and I wish I could do less of it so I can do all these other things in my life. <laughs> and so what my company does is we empower them with communication and leadership skills so that they can delegate the things they don't like doing about dentistry to the people yeah. on their team and they can go live their life. Yeah. You know, and be successful business owners. So we, we really are training dentists to be CEOs of their practice. Mm. Um, and I love that I get to do that because I get to work my sciency brain and I get to work my leadership brain. And the entertainer in me loves this because I'm literally on Zoom, on camera with my clients all day, every day. That's yeah, what I do. And it's a form, and I think for me, coaching is a form of creativity. So you're always tapping into oh, yeah. creative, like shifting and shaping with this person. Yeah. You're creating with this person consistently. And I that's why yeah. one of the things I really love. Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot of fun. And you know what? I really am a rare bird in the dental industry because you know, that dentists that. and people in that industry are very introverted. Mm -hmm. And I am so not that. Not, no. So when I'm coaching them, like at first they're like, wow, she's a lot. But what's also really cool is that I get to bring them out of their shell you know mm. we get to be silly together I have them learn and laugh while they're with me and I find that to be really really important you know dentistry is a very mundane very like negatively viewed industry out there mm. but really like dentists are the front line of healthcare like what other healthcare provider do you see twice a year for at least an hour each time yeah no other healthcare provider right so I love that my work is encouraging them and empowering them to really be confident in what they provide and the difference they make in the healthcare industry. Yeah, and then they're, then yeah. they're a better service for the people who they are serving. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. thank you for all that. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, I got, I forgot, <laughs> I got my brain moved. I was like, oh, that sounds amazing like coaching dentistry for you know yeah. and like seeing well the... and you know this is this is a difficult time for small businesses mm -hmm. you know and all private practice dentists are small business owners so mm. it's been a really unique opportunity to be of service to these people during such a crazy time yeah I mean, the company that i work for is a small business i'm just lucky that my CEO has planned financially for catastrophes like this. 
Wow. You know? But not every business has that privilege. So I have the privilege of staying employed to help those CEOs through these times. Well, I'm curious of how did, like, how do you, how does that, that person plan for something like this? Like, it's unpredictable. Um, yeah. But well, I, I think a lot of it is putting a, a crap ton of money in savings. Yeah. Um, and I know <clears throat> that he has a lot of business advisors that are telling him where to store his yeah. money and how to move it. And I know he really doesn't carry debt other than like credit cards, which he pays. Right. So he's got like certain certain things as a business owner that he's just very smart about. I mean, the man's mm. been in business <clears throat> for decades and he's you know he started this company he himself coaching the dentist so he has to know right how to do this stuff successfully if he's coaching it out there yeah i would say too he's probably had a really smart smart people around him because i remember in my coaching program the calling the one one of the things towards the end she was like make sure that you plan for six months of money for six months out for your business and six months out for your life because you never know what's going to happen i was like mm -hmm. oh i am keeping that one yeah. no you know, <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know uh yeah so how well speaking of like current times like how are you doing with everything and are you grateful yeah. that you have your job house family your health and how are you doing with everything that's happening I, you know, this is like so cliche, I'm blessed, but <laughs> I really am, you know, I have my job. I've been, I've remained employed during this time and working, like I have not been um, sitting at home doing nothing. Like I'm still working my full-time job and getting to make a difference every day. So that's been an amazing, amazing blessing. Mm -hmm. And um, in mid-February, my company went 100% remote. So I used to have a physical office in New York. And in mid-February, we all moved to have home offices. And this was prior to any kind of epidemic. This was just a decision that was made so that the business could save money on rent. And yeah. so I have now a home office. And... That has made things a lot easier to adjust to because this is my new normal. This yeah. is my job now is I wake up and I walk across my apartment to my office and I sit here for the day. So, you know, having a routine has been incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I have my dog Mambo that I love so, <laughs> so much and he makes everything better. A good companion around this time. Oh my gosh, uh, absolutely. He's a professional cuddler. So and I say he's my assistant. He usually hangs out under my desk during the day. Um, so, you know, having him and having a routine around when he gets walked and things like that really helped to kind of keep my bearings and keep my life moving with purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some other like fun pro tips is do some workouts at home, like 305 Fitness. I don't know if you're familiar with them. I heard of that it, recently. It's dance cardio, but it's a little bit, I would like to say it's a little dance. sluttier than Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more twerking. Um, and so you get to do it in the comfort of your own home. It's a lot of fun. The instructors are really great. The music's really upbeat. So, you know, I do that a couple times a week. I also teach Zumba. I'm a Zumba instructor. Um, I've been licensed for eight years, eight plus years. Oh, wow. I so, had no idea. Yeah, boo. I do everything. <laughs> So wow. um, I've actually set up a couple classes that I've taught on Zoom for my friends and family. And it's been really amazing to have people in my life, like family members that live in Israel, join mm -hmm. in on my class on Zoom, which otherwise they could never do. So it's opened up avenues and channels of communication that just haven't been there before. Yeah. And who would have thought that I'd be teaching Zumba from my living room? Like, yeah. I, I had it like, that was not safe, number one, or smart. <laughs> oh, right, it would be like, not professional. Yeah, uh, but you know, I, I threw all of that away and I just found a, a clear background in my space. And I was like, screw it, people want to move, they're going to get to move. Yeah. We're going to move together. And I've gotten a lot of really good um, response to that and then you know the other thing that's a lot of fun that i highly recommend super time consuming so like if you've got time to kill it's perfect 
is diamond painting. I so it's like paint that. by numbers, but with rhinestones. This is my jam. Wow. So if you ever need to kill a few hours, this is a great way to do Because it's like, that. really, like, do you have to use like a tweezers or something to put that thing? You have to use like the little pen type thing with like some wax at the end of it to like pick them up like one by one. So, you know, some people get stressed doing something like this, but I really enjoy it. And it's satisfying because you watch it come together and you get all these colors. And so. Yeah, actually, that's one of the. Um, <clears throat> a common tip that most psychologists recommend is like coloring and doing something mundane like that. So you get lost in that. And so it, it calms you down. I have actually another coach. She runs classes and teaches, especially <laughs> towards men, I think using the arts and things like that to like channel, one, to tap into your creativity and two, to relieve stress. And, you know, I think it's a, a great and excellent way to just lose yourself into something that's crafty yeah absolutely yeah. it's very enjoyable yeah so before we get into the song she's gonna sing for us um and the only reason why i'm asking you this question is like so what is like a tool or something that you've been using to like really keep a level head like a distinction or some tool or exercise that you yeah. learned that has been really you've been holding on to for you that could probably make a difference with someone else i would say and i've been using this with my clients like pretty much every client is expressing gratitude mm. and like being present to what i'm grateful for um i think at first this quarantine really got to me and then I saw my clients having to close their businesses and furlough their employees and like stuff breaking down. And in that moment, I started to get really present to the how lucky I am, how fortunate I am to have this apartment that I love to live in and that I have a space that I created and have decorated and furnished to be a home. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I do have a paycheck coming in and I have people in my life that I'm connected to and I get to be of service. So it's, I would say, practicing gratitude and constantly represencing myself to what I'm grateful for has been a really extraordinary tool or place to stand. Yeah, it's, I, feel, I feel the same way. I've been practicing more gratitude than ever before. And like, just, it, it just like brings reality and calm and just, for me again, like somehow it helps me in my, what my my purpose is. Like I need to learn how to really, I'm a coach and what difference can I make? How can I like, like really creating something of value for people so that gratitude helps me stay connected to what matters to me the most. Yeah, yeah. Some, another, another tool that I've been using is I ask myself the question, like, what am I concerned about right now? And then the follow-up is, is there something I can do about it right now? Mm. And if the good answer one. is no, I can just do nothing with it right now. And if That's the answer is one. yes, then there's one or several actions I could take either right now or I could schedule to take them. And then it's no longer something that's like just overwhelming me. Mm. So that's a good that's one. Also really helpful. I feel like I need to write that on my wall, right on the paper or something like like a, a frame it because that's a really good one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Of course. So what song do you have prepared for us and why? Why that song? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm a musical theater girl and I love me a good sad song. <laughs> <laughs> so you said uplifting. I was like, well, this isn't very uplifting, but well, I, was like, I think it can oh, be. I like this song. Yeah, yeah. It's a, well, I think it's a really beautiful song. It's a Jonathan Reed Gilt song. It's called um, No Reason at All. <clears throat> and it's a song that I first heard sung by. Uh, an artist called Katie Thompson. She's also a musical theater performer. She writes her own music, composes her own music, but she has this voice that when oh she sings, it's like, it comes from her like toes all the way up <laughs> to her body and like, like takes you with her. And so I just, she's like one of my vocal 
idols, I would say. Like, I, I want to sing like her. I, I, I like the sound of her voice and I try to emulate it as much as possible. But anyway, this song is from a song cycle, which means that it's not from like a musical that's been on Broadway. It's like this composer put together a series of songs that are threaded together somehow. So I don't know the story behind this song, but what it means to me you know, the, the lyrics say, sometimes I just need to cry for no reason at all. And I, I think that a lot of people can relate to that right now. Like sometimes I'm just out of sorts. Oof, and me. the thing that helps <laughs> is cry, right? Or sometimes it really just helps to be honest about it and like text a friend or call a friend and just be like, I just feel like crying right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes when we're really upset, we think that there has to be a reason why so that we can like go after it and like fix it. Yeah. But that's not always true. And, you know, in mental health, like when you're depressed, sometimes you're depressed just because. Yeah. And that's one of the things that makes it so hard is like you could have so many things to be happy about and still feel sad. Mm. So in a way, I think that this song brings that forth. It's like sometimes I just feel like crying and there doesn't have to be a reason. And actually, sometimes it's really liberating to know that there's no reason. Yeah. Just do it because it feels good. And yeah, because crying right. is a form of releasing. Yeah. 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 And, you know, in the, in the song that talks a little bit about like striving to be someone or like longing to set yourself free. And I think we can take that out of whatever context the song is in and like we're all longing to be set free right now <laughs> like physically yeah and we're longing for that connection like human to human connection and that's a lot of what she sings about in the song so i love it i love singing it i love the pain in my voice when i sing it like not like it hurts to sing but like being able to really emote in this mm. song um like it really moves me so yeah so that's the song i'm gonna sing for you all right i'm ready okay be right. ready be she ready, ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna bring it down we're gonna get sad, sad. <laughs> be your possibility <laughs> and the possibility of sadness. sadness oh boy all right here we go here we go all right Whew. I lay here in the dark, yearning for something, a tiny glance, a kind word, to get my heart beating, but you'd never know, cause I never show how much you've helped me to see the woman I'm longing to be. Sometimes I just need to cry for no reason at all. Sometimes I'm too tired to try for no reason at all. Sometimes I just have to learn to let go for no reason at all. I stand in the door as life passes by and feel like I'm stuck in between the life that I want and what I can reach. It's like I'm not heard and not seen. There must be a way at the end of the day that I can help make you see the woman I long to set free. Sometimes I just need to cry for no reason at all. Sometimes I'm too tired to try for no reason at all. Sometimes I just have to learn to let go for no reason at all. I can see the things that I need 
to change in me. And that's a start, a place I'd rather be. And when the time comes, will I have the strength to pull myself up and see that sometimes I just need to cry for no reason at all. Sometimes I'm too tired to try. For no reason at all, sometimes I just have to learn to let go. For no reason, for no reason, for no reason at all. So there it is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my eyes are watering up. Because I can relate to that. Just like when this all had started, I was just like frantic and just in disarray. And I think I started crying because like a lot of my jobs got canceled. And I was just like, what is happening? You know, and like learning to one connect collect myself and breathe and like okay you know and then practicing gratitude knowing that okay i still have money coming in all oh, like i had a, it, it actually this like whole thing really challenged my money beliefs and i had to really go to work on that like and then all of a sudden i started to see this change by doing this work on myself uh, with a coach and I was just like, oh, okay, it's me like just focusing on the wrong thing. And I need to shift, I need to shift that context fast. <laughs> Otherwise yeah. I'm going to go down <laughs> a yeah. dark hole. Yeah. 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 And like anything that we've been dealing with prior to quarantine is just now augmented <laughs> right. exponentially. Right. Like it was actually always there. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just giving that to us and sharing your gift with us. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So now um, my final question that I ask everybody. <laughs> okay, uh <-huh. laughs> you're waiting. <laughs> it's a simple question. So, uh, what are you learning about yourself, life, and love during this current moment? Mm. Oh, such a good question. <laughs> what are you learning about yourself, life, and love during this time? Everything. Um, okay, I'm learning that I have the ability to generate love. That was a notebook that just fell. <laughs> yeah, love knocked it off the shelf. <laughs> um, I have the ability to generate love with anybody, mm. and that it's really powerful and it really makes a difference. And um, I'm also noticing like how easy it is for me to serve the people around me. Um, in the in the realm of love and romance. Um, I'm dating somebody right now, and yes. one, one of the things that I'm learning is the value of having the tough conversations and like being willing, willing to hear whatever they have to say and being willing to say something that they may not like hearing or that you may not like saying and like getting not comfortable but acclimated to the fact that dating someone and starting a relationship is an arena for self-development and it oh, is yeah. designed to show you all of your gaps oh yeah listen so i'm just noticing my gaps if people yeah. can get that like that was 
across the board, the person who I study with, the books I read, they all say the same thing. Your relationships are there to teach you and grow you and shine light on the things that you still need to work on with yourself and not working out on another person, but you have to go do the work <laughs> on yourself. Yeah, and, and the truth is, you know, in many areas of my life, I'm like, you could say anything to me, I could say anything to you, like I'm very self-expressed and I'm just, I'm discovering like where I get stopped to be self-expressed and like the hangups that come up and like the concerns mm. that come up that are really not there in other areas, you know, but they're really there in, in my romantic life and how much crap I make up <laughs> all the time, you know, like, thanks brain. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. And where can people find you online? OMG. Okay, so uh, it's pretty easy. It's Mickey Chorney underscore is my Instagram handle. And can you spell your last name? It's, well, my full name is M-I-C-K-Y-C-H-O-R-N-Y. Okay, great. So Mickey Chorney underscore is my Instagram handle. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. It's uh, my first legal name is Michal, so you'll find me as M I C H A L. Michal. Right. Oh, yes. I'm learning so much. <laughs> I know. And uh, I, I'm on TikTok, but I'm not posting anything. I'm just gonna watch your videos on TikTok. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, don't, I just watch. <laughs> I find it very entertaining. entertaining yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being who you are and making a difference and just gracing us with your talent and your gift. Thank you, it's my pleasure. I'm glad to have been here with yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you.